G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game spawning in the east side of the map in the color blue playing as the Holy Roman Empire it is give you anxiety and on the west side of the map in the color green playing as the Abbasid dynasty we've got David Kim aka Puppy Paw ladies and gentlemen welcome to Dry Arabia We're watching two of the world's best players go up against one another these two players currently ranked David Kim ranked it within the top 10 Puppy Paw obviously a very good player uh, and GUA ranked in the top 30 so undoubtedly going to be a close game today that is for sure so i'm excited to see what we've got this is a, a little bit of an interesting matchup we've seen this dynamic uh th this matchup happen quite a lot uh recently the dynamic has shifted obviously trade is now playing a really big part of this matchup trade is one of those things where people are like well it's it's overpowered but then you know as an example we watched the uh, egc tv event over on the weekend and we didn't see it once so if it's so overpowered why isn't it being used well perhaps it gets used today we'll have to wait and see now if you're unfamiliar with either of these creators i'll leave links in the description to where you can watch them live over on twitch both of them do stream live over on twitch so i'd encourage you to go check them out gua of course is quite the character very very fun i've been watching gua streams for geez probably three four years now uh and uh yeah they're always great fun to be a part of uh and uh, and puppy poor as well he's, he's it's a bit of a different character puppy poor a bit more quiet a bit more reserved uh but i'll leave links in the description to where you can catch both of them but Let's talk a little bit more about this opening because GUA's got a nice little spawn on the backside here. Arkham Chapel in between the wood line and the berries should be able to hit both of these. You're only going to get the start of the wood line. The other, the other option, the other alternative, I wouldn't say the alternative rather, uh, is uh, is just that you put the Arkham here. I think you should be able to fit the Arkham right here, uh, lock it into these trees. That way you get the gold and you get pretty much all of this wood line up until about the middle. Uh, so I think that's probably going to be the best option for him. But we'll ride on board with, now with Puppy Paw and see how he's doing. Of course, going to be playing the Abbasid. We'll be looking out for the, those wings to be coming through soon. Puppy Paw infamous for queuing up all these villagers. But you wait until he's about to click up and he'll cancel all of them. And see how many he can leave in the queue. But uh, yeah, this is quite common. There you go. You can see him in the habit. He, he cancels four of them and he puts two back in immediately. It's um, it, I, I, I suspect it might be, <laughs> might be an autism thing. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Like an, AD, an ADD thing. Actually, there's no ADD. It is going to be the trade wing. I, I um I realize that there's no ADD anymore. It's just ADHD. It's the uh it's it's the only uh, diagnosis that, that they they'll actually give. I I'm not sure if uh, ADD is in the DSM five, but uh, yeah, beautiful little spot now uh, for GUA. If anybody wondering, uh you know I, I'm allowed to to say other people are autistic because I have autism. <laughs> so that it, it <laughs> I'm remind <laughs> oh gosh I'm reminded of that meme. There's a meme where it's like. I, I, I look I, i'm never gonna do it justice but it, it, he the, the, one guy made a joke about self-harm and someone called him out on it and he said no it's fine it's like the n-word when you're black uh because i've got depression that's what he said and i was just like well that is absolutely crazy uh i i mean i, I can see where you're coming from i don't agree with it but anyway it's it's the same sort of thing with uh with autism but anyway uh let's let's move on let's move forward because we've got the ark and chapel that's about to come up here really early ark and chapel for gua uh and great little spot obviously he's on the stone here so he's going to be looking to go into the second town center and up against trade i can't help but feel that this is a bit dangerous and it it, it feels scary to me to say that your entire strategy could just be invalidated immediately by a wing choice of your enemy but you've got to consider the following right so you've got the holy roman empire who's going into a second tc and realistically in this game right now you need to deny enemy trade now there's a couple ways that you can do that here as as gua number one would obviously be a, a feudal type of push where he's looking to apply pressure uh to, towards the trade line towards this this northern position alternatively you can look to siege down this western market that's his first option. Number two is that he goes to the Castle Age. And once in the Castle Age, you can take access to... Or get, gain access to units like the Knight. And the Knights are just going to be really effective of, of with killing the traders. Obviously, the problem happens if your enemy goes into, say... Um, your, your enemy walls the entire trade line, and now your Knights can't get through. And for GUA, he'd be looking for Knights probably to hit the trade line. Enemy trade line maybe around the 8 minute mark, 8 minute 30 mark, somewhere around that. Depending on how fast he went with his uh, with his castle age. But of course, that's not going to be the case today. GUA just going to be sticking it out, looking for that super fast TC. And we do see it is going to be a super fast TC. So going for... This is one of the quickest TCs you can get in the game right now. Uh, it's up there with the English TC, uh, up there with the Chinese TC, 4 minutes 40 uh, is is currently my record. Actually, I, I did do a 439 with uh, with English, getting my TC down. I, I will uh, put that one up on the wall. But uh, this is definitely going to be up there. And, um, 
Oh, don't you just hate that so much? What do you even do here? I, like, I, I, I would just surrender at this point. <laughs> I would just surrender. What do you do? He's not going to walk onto greener pastures. He just, he cancels it, moves it a little bit further. You know what, you know, you know what uh, Puppy Paul should have done or could have done? Move the sheep out. You start spreading the sheep out across this area uh, because GUA obviously can't control them. Even if he tries to put down a building, it's not going to work. Puppy Paul being very nice there could have pushed all these deer back away from the, the town center and then killed them further away. It doesn't really affect the Holy Roman Empire as much just because they have a greater carrying capacity, but we already do see GUA has spotted out the trade wing, spots out the enemy market in the corner of the map, immediately moves to the northern corner, and I suspect we may have some walls coming down now. There is a couple of options as to how we can wall this, but it you've got to be so careful. Not got to be careful, but you've got to be so worried when you see this kind of spawn. Okay, if you take a look down here... And G oh, my, oh my god! He, he's... he's I, I, I thought that he was... Okay, okay, I did not expect that at all. He's trading to the opposite side and GUA is just going to come up here walling like thinking he's an absolute goat, which he is, by the way, of Age of Vampires 3. Real, re realistically, though, it's not going to matter at all. We can see both both sides getting villages taken out but with wolves. GUA completely unaware that the actual trade is happening right under his nose. Now, realistically, I mean, the, it looks kind of like the trade... Like, you could split this map either way. So I don't really feel like this is terrible, if, if that makes sense. Like, when I say terrible, I don't mean it... It it, it, it doesn't really... <laughs> Sorry, I, I got to get my my words correct. And you can see now we've uh, we've got the traders that have been spotted out by the villager. So villager are actually going to be moving out, looking to wall up this, this market. Uh, but essentially, if you were to split this map down the middle, right... You could, you could do it two ways. You could go like that, or you could go like that. It obviously makes a lot more sense to do it this way, just because that way your your center or your split uh, is a lot closer to where your town center is, whereas if you split it down like that, you're kind of splitting where your enemy is. But obviously he's like looking to kind of split something like that. So it does make sense. Uh, apologies for, for all the drawing. Uh, but uh, g Wake looking to put on some pressure, and we do see the trader. Going to be standing guard and saying, hey, I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm looking to, to prevent this trade from happening. g is just going to be looking to try and get a counter wall up, though. And the trade are going to be moving on. Look at this. Look at the look at the trading moves right now. Puppy Paul bringing out all-stop spearmen together with the Camel Archer. Going to be looking to try and shut this down. And shall be successful as the wall gets cancelled. And with that, the villager going to get chased away. We can see the single horseman looking to try and put pressure on that camel, but it's just not going to matter. Spearman here as well, looking to clean it up. And at the moment, we've got... We've got Puppy Paw on nine traders already. Now, remember, GUA's gone into that second town center. And this is where I was saying it feels weird to have your entire strategy just invalidated by a single wing choice of the enemy. But going into this trade, it basically says you have to kill me and you have to kill me now. Whether that's through Fast Castle Knights, whether that's through heavy feudal pressure off one base. But the fact that you've gone into second town center means that it's going to take some time for you to get those forces ramped up. And the problem with getting ramped up is, well, guess what? Your enemy is going to be ramping up as well because they are trading. Now, there's a couple reasons why Abbasid have got the best trade in the game, or at least the best feudal trade in the game, and it, it is all because of that barrier to entry. That's that's the real reason why. So what do we mean by that? What, what do we mean by that, rather? Uh, traders cost less. They cost much less. So it means that you can get your traders in for cheaper. That means that you're spending more resources on your units. And of course, once that first trade comes in, then it's, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because the more traders that you've got bringing in gold, then the more traders you're able to afford, whether that's through buying wood so that you can afford uh, more, more traders or whether that's from the gold that you're getting in. But in addition to that, you've obviously got access to three free traders from the very beginning of the game through the trade wing. And on top of that, you've also got access to a unique technology which enables you to choose a secondary resource. In this case, we see Puppy Paw is actually elected to pick up some food. So there's a lot of factors here that are contributing to why this trade is so damn good early on in the game here for Puppy Paw. So over on the other side of the map, though, GUA. I mean, and as I said, when it comes to the way that GUA plays here, you can't really look to match trade from an economic perspective. If your enemy's getting free trade or getting trade going on like this, especially as the Abbasid Dynasty, it's it's not going to happen. Even even let, let's say hypothetically you go Castle Age, you look to try and secure relics. The Abbasid player is just going to deny the relics from you. They're going to have way too many units for you to contest. The relics are going to get walled in. You know, he's going to wall this relic. He's going to wall this re relic. He'll probably wall this relic over here. Send all of his units here. You'll be lucky if you get one relic. Uh, and he'll allow you to have that relic because it's nice and safe. It's in the back of the base. But that would be it. 
And you can see just uh, so far, it has been an absolute just dismemberment of the attack from GUA. And he's scaling with regard to villager count, but you need to remember that these villagers, even though they are one villager, they're not effectively one villager. They are much greater than one villager. If you were to take a full distance, a full length map trade route like this one here and calculate the resources that it's generating, you'd be looking at much greater than one villager. I think it's, it's closer towards 1.5 villagers. So that really gives you a bit of an indication on where Puppy Paw is because at the moment he's sitting on 16 traders. So I'm, I'm happy to go ahead and call that, you know, 24 traders, something like that. It's a huge difference. So obviously add an extra eight on it, 60 versus 48. Now, Holy Roman Empire villagers, they're a little bit buffer, a little bit better than uh, normal villagers. So they've got that going for them, especially when you've got this many vills on wood, they're getting buffed up by the, the, the prelate. But it's just important to remember that the, that villager count, it's a little bit tough to uh, to go. You know, you know, one thing I would love to see on the UI is a total income with like, I don't, I don't even know how you'd put it, but I'd love to see a total income versus total income uh, of, of resources. And the thing is, it's kind of hard to average it out for trade because for anybody who doesn't know, trade takes three minutes and seven seconds. So three minutes and seven seconds from the time this trader hits this market, goes to this trading post, and then comes back to deliver the gold. Three minutes and seven seconds, assuming it's a full map. Now, this is a little bit shorter, so it might be like three, se three minutes and two seconds, something like that. But the point is that that gold that you're picking up gets delivered once within that that minute and it's registered and then for the other two minutes you just don't see it when that's obviously not the reality so maybe th maybe there's another way that they could they could look to do it but any anyway we'll worry about that later because puppy Paw pushing out now gonna be looking to put some pressure on this second town center gua leaving a few too many villagers out here and he's gonna get called out of position already losing up to 12 villagers at the same time a counter-attack happening on the other side of the map quick walls coming in though from puppy Paw. not a whole lot of units back on this side of the map but remember he's got the reinforcements gonna be making their way through He's gone for the double archery range, double racks, and single stable for the moment. Actually, I take it back. It's the double stable. So pretty much the 111, but uh, just with a, a few added buildings. But looking to try and break through. So the big thing here, the key factor for me in this is the GUA needs to try and get behind this wall and needs to look to, to shut this down. So I'd be looking to draw a wall across here. At the very least, I'd be looking to do that. You know, you can pull the ball here, get in here and camp this trading line. This, this is exactly what he needs to do. But the problem is if he takes this fight... It's going to be quite some time before his, uh, before the fight is over and then the enemy reinforcements are going to be here and there is no way he holds that. So I'd almost be tempted to say, GUA, just look to throw away your units. Just commit them to shutting down what this, what your enemy's currently doing uh, in, in their base because your units have just been thrown away completely. And now Puppy Paw is in an incredible position because we're at the 13-minute mark and Puppy Paw is scaling like an absolute map. Oh my god, GUA snuck a vill. He snuck a vill. Now, this is great. This shuts down trade in the interim, okay? That means that it's shut down just for the moment, okay? But as you can see, it's still well and truly ahead. So this this is great from GUA and you need to continue this disruption. See, what, what I would have loved from GUA is, you know, an, another counter force coming down here to the south side and then looking to do the same thing down here. Uh, it's, it's a little bit hard because you, you've just got no space uh, to wall it out. So really well played and recognized here by Puppy Paw uh, to, to utilize this because there's, I don't even think you can get a wall in between these two. There's no way you're going to be able to wall that out the same way you can wall the corner here. All the traders just kind of chilling. One of the things you can do in this situation is you can just build another market and then just change the home market so that it, it, it's this one. And then that, that's an actual way around it. But this way works as well. Uh, and uh, all the traders just going to come through, drop off their gold. And you can see what happens to, to Puppy Paw's gold income. It should very quickly start to skyrocket. I'm not sure what happened here. I don't know whether these guys dropped off their gold, but a couple of idols here. I don't know what's happened here, but uh, we do hear attack sirens somewhere else along the map. I'm not sure exactly where that is. Yeah, not, not too sure exactly where that is. There, there the traders are now coming through. And you can see that, that income coming through for, for Puppy Paw. So just remember, obviously, this is three minutes of work and the military wing comes through straight away. So he just goes into... He, he just goes straight into the uh, the military wing here, which is definitely the right choice, the safe choice. You don't need the culture wing. Like, you, you, you don't worry about that. At this point, your income is so great. So how does GUA get back into this game? He could look to go castle and drop a keep on the corner. I think that would be one of the ways that he could possibly do it. But he's going to have to pull out a miracle, right? Like, you're going to have to get castle, pull, pull up, pull that keep down, somehow get this wall down in a jiffy, and then get the keep down immediately uh, next to it. This top corner is somewhat secure for the moment but obviously puppy ball can always look to go and counter-attack that as well then that opens up another trajectory that you're you're going to have to try and defend it just makes it so difficult because trade forces your enemy on onto uh your own side of the map and that's really 
where the difference comes out. And you can see right now the GUA, he's not even thinking about aging up at this point. He is just sticking to the Feudal Age. A man very committed to the Feudal Age. I remember in Age of Empires 2, it was a bit of a meme. You'd watch GUA playing on, on stream and he'd be like, play, he'd, he'd, he'd play, play the British. He loves the British. And it would be 35 minutes into the game and he's still age two. Uh, and <laughs> it was it was just such a, a, a GUA-esque thing because he, he is he's such an aggressive player. He's always looking to fight and take fights nonstop. So it was just very natural to see. But we do now see that uh, more and more units are streaming out, trickling out here. My suspicion is GUA is going to look for a fight uh, once that age up comes through. You ideally want to fight... Look at this cheeky little scout on the backside. You ideally want to fight uh, before your enemy gets those upgrades through. But I guess the, the realistic position here is that uh, he's still fight quite, quite far behind on that military account. Let's jump on board, though, with Puppy Paw and see how he's doing. 32 traders. 32 traders, a little bit scary. All right, let's see if GUA looks to push here. Military wing comes through. Puppy Paw with plenty of resources in the bank still. Going to start looking to spend them. We don't see any veteran upgrades yet. And GUA completely outnumbered. We enter into the cinematic mode. Uh, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. He just deleted his army. Is, is this... Is this actually a revolt? Is, is GUA revolting right now? Is this GUA saying that trade is this broken? There's nothing I can do. I delete my army. He deleted his army. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you know... We, 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 earlier on in the game, we were talking about is trade overpowered? Is trade broken? I guess you've got your answer right. GUA seems to think it's it's broken. Now, remember, for anybody who doesn't know, GUA is actually an ex-game uh, dev for AoE4. He, he was doing uh, quite a bit of uh, of testing for Age of Empires 4. He was a balance tester. So if he feels a way about a certain thing, it's, there's a, probably a pretty good chance that that is the case. And look at this, GUA. Oh, GUA. He, yeah, he's, 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 uh, he's lost it. He's lost it. All the bills getting pulled. Deletes everything. Look at this. GUA is just... Oh, we got, the, we got the trade highway down here, by the way. Um, Imperial coming through right now. I mean, if if this is quintessential... like This is quintessential trade. There's no two ways about it. Do you reckon... <laughs> how mad do you think GUA is when he sees the puppy paws going imp off this? Like, how are you able to have this many units get castle, get imp? It's It just doesn't make sense. That's, that's what he's thinking right now. And... GUA, <laughs> GUA playing Age of Empires 4 like it's Age of Empires 3. For anybody who doesn't know, in Age of Empires 3, there's with landmarks, it doesn't matter if you destroy the landmarks. What matters is you have to kill all the units. So people will often surrender or concede before that happens. Oh no, GUA, what are you doing? No, don't, don't be drawing letters on the map, GUA. <laughs> oh, avo avoid the symbols and letters, GUA. No, don't do it like this. I mean, but the, I guess this is a, a poignant reminder that, uh, that trade... The, the, it's lol. Is he writing lol? What's he writing? <laughs> He's just going for some sort of silly base defense. I, I guess it's just a, a reminder right now that it, it seems a bit counterintuitive to have a, an entire wing that just counters your strategy immediately. And I, I think GUA probably could have looked to have scouted the wing, but even in saying that, it's one of those things where it's tough, right? What, are, what GUA, what are you doing? You're just making a fortress at B? Is that is he doing the meme B? Is this... I, I feel like he's, he's going to draw Farquad next. B. It's a, <laughs> it's the hyper surreal... Is it hyper surreal? The surrealism memes coming to life? Uh, but uh, yes. I mean, at, at this point in the game, it's obviously clearly over, ladies and gentlemen. But it, it is a good question. Does trade need to be nerfed? What do you think? Is trade too strong? Do, was Puppy Paw just... I mean, Puppy Paw's obviously a great player. As, as I mentioned earlier, he's top 10 up against top 30. So there's still a little bit of difference between the two. But obviously... <laughs> <laughs> GUA at this point, he, he would be pulling his hair out. Next stream for GUA is going to be a bald stream. And GUA just having a laugh. Um, so yeah, I, I think the, the, the question is, is, is trade too busted? That's what we're looking at right now. And Puppy Paw deletes some units in solidarity with GUA, deleting all of his units in solidarity. Fellas, once again, I'm going to leave links in the description. As you can see, I said in the beginning, Puppy Paw a bit more reserved than GUA. GUA definitely a li little bit more flamboyant. So go check him out. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can see him. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.